right, now we have a painted but very clean airplane. So the next thing is to start adding some uh, weathering, some distress, uh, something to kind of break up the cleanliness of it. And the first thing I want to do is I want to add some imperfections to the surface of the metal. You know, this metal gets banged up, stepped on, shot at. Um, so the odds of it staying perfectly smooth for very long is kind of small. So let's turn off a lot of the stuff. We don't need it for now. We're just going to hide it. Hide the aluminum. I turn off my bump. And I'm going to create two layers. This first one is going to be just a, a way to kind of evaluate what's going on. Make it a maybe slightly darker gray. Make it glossy. I do want metal. Make it metallic. So we get some shine on it. All right. Next thing I want to do is I want to create another fill layer. And I only want height on this. And I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to search for you know, black and white. I'm going to add a, try this one to the height, the black and white spot three. And it looks like tin foil, but we can adjust that. So I want it by UV, that's fine. I want something much smaller. So maybe 0 0.2, maybe 0.1. And try point two, and we're going to add a blur with filter. So add a filter, and we're going to make it on height, and we're going to make it a blur. And that'll smooth things out a bit, but we want it more than that, so we're going to set it to three. And that'll smooth things out, and then we need to change the intensity of it to so maybe make it fifty percent. You can see I was just starting to make some, some light wrinkles here. Might be too much still. We can always dial it back. It's going to look different with paint on it, but I may actually make the pattern a little bigger. So maybe 0.1, blend it out some more, and then maybe just increase the blur a little bit more. Just to smooth it out a little bit more. We're trying to create you know, that dimpled effect. Maybe cut back on the value. A lot of this is kind of fiddly. And like I said, when I put paint on it, it's going to actually look different. So. We'll leave it like this for now, knowing we can always come back and change it. And we'll just call this uh, wrinkles, skin wrinkles. All right, and that'll go into our bump maps. And when you drop something in, you need to make sure that it goes right in the right place of the stack. It's okay where it is, it doesn't seem to be affecting, but I think I want to put it on the bottom of the stack. It's kind of the basis for that. All right, next thing I want to do is I want to add some dirt overall. So we can turn back on our aluminum, we can turn off this fill layer, turn on our painted, and we'll just turn these other guys on too. Maybe we'll take a look at that wrinkle. How does that look? See, once the paint gets on, you really don't see it much. So maybe we'll go in there and change it to 60. We'll see how that renders out. All right, let's add some dirt. First thing I want to do is I want to create some dirt. So I'm going to create a another fill layer. Put this up here. I'm just going to turn off bumps for now. I'm going to call it dirt. This is going to be the dirt that collects, you know, in between the panels and you know, in crevices and stuff like that. All right. So this we need color and we need roughness. And roughness is going to be fully rough because we want it to be, you know, non-reflective. We're going to add a fill, and I'm going to add a filter on color. I'm going to look for gradient. I'm going to choose the gradient. So for fill, I want to throw a noise into color. Um, that'll do. And what I'm, going to do, I'm going to turn off these so we can see what's going on. All right, so that's what we have so far for color. The gradient lets you, it's similar to the blender gradients um, where we can pick some values and then depending on where they show up in this you know, set of zero to one values, you're going to see the colors here. So for example, if I made these some different colors here, made it easier to see the differences, you can see how these colors show up here. And then you can change how much of each one shows up by moving these sliders around. You know, by default, it's they got you know, perfectly spaced out at 0 0.5 and 1. Um, but you know, you can, you can do what you want. I'm going to change the scale. because I want the dirt to be finer. So I'm going to maybe go to a 0.5. No, that's the wrong way. Go to 4. I don't like that either. Let's do a, um, not a UV projection, but a triplanar. Get it all over. And then maybe we can change the scale. Now we can play with the gradients. 
less of that red. And he's, I'm not going to use red, obviously. I'm just using that. Sometimes it's good to use false colors because it gives you a better idea of where they are. It makes it easier to see them. All right, let's call that good enough. But now I want to change the colors to kind of dirt colors. So just kind of first start, put them off into the tans and the browns. And the dirt that gets in there is probably more you know, kind of desaturated. This is giving us some variation in the colors. All right. So this is the dirt that's going to be collected inside the, uh, you know, crevices and stuff. I still think I want to make the pattern smaller. All right. We'll stick with that. All right. So this is our dirt. This is going to we're going to use a mask, of course, to put put the dirt into just the places we want. So I'm going to create a new a new folder up here. And I'll call it dirt or paint and dirt. And I'm going to put the paint in there. And I'm going to put the dirt in there. I want the paint on top. All right. So now I can put a generator on the paint. So we put the paint back on. It's going to cover up the dirt. Right. And now I can add a generator. And we're going to choose the dirt generator. And it looks like we want to invert it because, you know, these, you would think the dirt would accumulate in here. So we'll click invert and there you go. It's throwing the dirt into the crevices and corners. And now it's a matter of adjusting, you know, how much dirt there really is. Um, you know, aircraft don't have a lot of dirt. They generally kept pretty clean. You know, it's not like an armor, you know, like a tank or something. Um, so there's just some fiddling here. You know, pause the video I uh, play with these. All right, well, that's good enough for now. And like every other generated texture, um, we don't want to just leave it as, you know, just by default. We always want to add a paint level so that we can go in and customize where that mask, you know, where that mask works. So I'm going to go back to my brushes, and I'm going to look for a soft brush, maybe this one. And I can just paint on that mask and take away dirt where I don't want it to be. This is all where you do the custom work. Um, so you can either put the dirt in by, in this case, by painting with white, uh, or if you wanted to add some dirt someplace, um, just for example, you can just switch it over to black and, and add dirt there, but I don't want dirt there. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video while I take some time to you know, carefully paint in where I want the dirt to be, because obviously it's, it's too dirty in some spots and probably not dirty enough in others. All right, so I'll be back in a minute. All right, well, I've painted in the mask where I want the dirt and where I don't want the dirt. Um, at this point, there are a couple more things I can do to it. One is I can add a filter here, and we're going to look for blur, and that's just going to blur the the mask a little bit. And then what I can do is I can make the dirt a little more subtle by coming down here to this fill, and while I'm in the base color, I can pull that back, and that'll soften that up. You know, we don't want it to be, you can see how it's changing up there a little bit, the intensity. Right. We don't want it to be too, too dirty. All right, so what's next? I want to add dirt to the tires. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it, copy of it, into the rubber folder. I'm going to put the tire rubber on top, and take a look at our tires. Add a white mask. I'm going to add a generator. Call it dirt. Invert it. So it gets put inside there. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a paint level. And I'm just going to pause it for a minute while I custom paint this. All right, so we got our dirt on our tires. So we can minimize that. Turn these back on for now. And the next thing I want to do is I want to add a mask to expose the under, under, underlying aluminum. Uh, at the beginning of the video, I created this uh, folder that contains the paint and the dirt. And the reason I did that is I wanted to be able to chip the paint and the dirt all the way through down to the bare metal. So by putting them both inside of this folder, I can add a white mask. And then on this, I can add a generator. And on this generator, I'm going to choose the metal edges. And of course, we're going to have to invert it. 
and those are our metal edges. Now sometimes, now obviously we're going to have to fine tune this with um, another paint level, like we always do. We add a paint and then we'll customize and spend a lot of time you know, making sure the chips are places that it makes sense. The generator really just kind of gets you started, um, but you need to look at the model and see how it's used and where paint would get worn away. Uh, sometimes though it's hard to tell where one color is versus another, particularly when the base color, like the aluminum, is so close to the, the camouflage gray. So in cases like that, what I'll do is I'll often create a dummy level. So I'm just going to create a fill level here. And I'm going to put um, just a color in it. And I'm going to make it something that's clearly not part of the model. And now it's very easy to see where the metal, you know, the exposed metal is going to be. So I'm going to pause the video again, and I'll spend some time just, you know, painting painting where I don't want or, or do want. And I just take in and out um, all the chipping, because right now it's a little excessive in places. You know, obviously the canopy wouldn't be this warm. All right, so I'll be back in a little bit. So I finished hand painting in the chipped metal, and I can turn off my little purple masking thing there. It's starting to look dirty. I think the next thing I want to do is I want to put some exhaust stains here. So I'm actually going to copy the dirt, create a new version of dirt, and I'm going to put that above the paint. And I'm going to call this exhaust. And I'm going to change the colors of the gradient to be blacks and grays. We'll add a black mask to that. And then I can just add a paint layer. And I can go ahead and paint in the exhaust. It's looking pretty good. Turn on the bumps. And let's export it into Blender and see how it looks. All right, here's some test renders. Um, you know, a little weathering seems to go a long way. So I think at this point, you know, unless I see something that really stands out, I'm going to hold off on any more weathering or painting. And I think in the next segment, we're going to start talking about rigging. Uh, there's lots of control surfaces to, to rig, um, you know, landing gear, flaps, elevators, ailerons, propeller. Um, so lots of rigging stuff to do. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for this lesson, and I will see you in the next one.